The Last Reflection Prologue Sarah Bennett stood transfixed before the ornate Victorian mirror, her heart pounding in her chest. The flickering candlelight of the estate sale danced across its gilded surface, casting eerie shadows that seemed to beckon her closer. As an experienced antiques dealer, Sarah had seen her fair share of unique and mysterious items over the years. But there was something different about this mirror. Something that made the hairs on the back of her neck stand on end. Perhaps it was the way her reflection seemed to waver and distort, like a face underwater. Or maybe it was the faint whispers that seemed to emanate from its depths when she leaned in close. Sarah shook her head, trying to dispel the strange feeling of unease that had settled over her. It was just a mirror, she told herself firmly. A beautiful, valuable antique, but ultimately nothing more than cleverly arranged glass and wood. And yet, as she completed the sale and carefully loaded the heavy piece into her car, Sarah couldn't quite shake the sense that she had just acquired something far more significant than she realized. It wasn't until later that night, as she sat alone in her shop, meticulously polishing the mirror surface, that Sarah saw it. Just for a split second, a flash of movement in the reflection that didn't match her own. Sarah froze, her heart racing. Slowly, hesitantly, she raised her eyes to peer into the mirror's depths once more. At first, she saw only her own pale, anxious face staring back at her. But then, like a picture coming into focus, another image began to take shape. The ghostly visage of a woman, her dark hair styled in intricate Victorian curls, her eyes filled with a desperate, pleading anguish. Sarah blinked hard, sure she must be imagining things. But when she looked again, the woman was still there, her lips moving soundlessly, as if trying to convey an urgent message. A sudden wave of dizziness overtook Sarah, and she stumbled back from the mirror, her breath coming in short gasps. This couldn't be real. It had to be a trick of the light, or her exhausted mind playing games after a long day. She closed her eyes, willing the haunting image to disappear. But deep down, Sarah knew that what she had seen was no illusion. The woman in the mirror, whoever she was, had been trying to tell her something. And despite every rational part of her screaming to leave the mirror behind and forget this ever happened, Sarah knew she wouldn't be able to rest until she uncovered the truth behind the antique's dark secret. With a shaking hand, she reached out and gently traced the mirror's ornate frame, a feeling of grim determination settling over her. She didn't know it yet, but Sarah Bennett was about to embark on a journey into the very heart of darkness, a journey from which she might never return. Chapter 1. The Arrival the chimes above the door of Bennett's antiques tinkled cheerfully as Sarah maneuvered the mirror through the entryway, grunting slightly under its substantial weight. She'd been lucky to snag such a unique and mesmerizing piece at the estate sale. Victorian antiques were always in high demand among her clientele. Sarah carefully navigated through the crowded aisles of her shop, weaving between the assorted treasures and curiosities she had collected over the years. The smell of aged wood and lemon polish filled her nostrils a comforting scent that always made her feel at home. Looks like quite a find, came a sudden voice from behind her, making Sarah jump. She turned to see her business partner and dearest friend Jenna, eyeing the mirror appreciatively. Late 19th century, if I'm not mistaken, the craftsmanship on that frame is exquisite. Sarah nodded, setting the mirror down with a huff. Picked it up at the old Carlisle estate sale this morning. Apparently it belonged to some reclusive Victorian woman named Eleanor, Jenna leaned in closer, peering at her reflection with a small frown. Hmm, there's something a bit off about it, don't you think? The glass almost looks clouded. I thought so too at first, Sarah admitted, remembering the eerie vision that had appeared to her the previous night. But I'm sure it's nothing a good cleaning won't fix. She forced a bright smile, not wanting to dwell on the strange occurrence. The two women maneuvered the mirror over to a prime spot near the front window, where the midday sun cast a warm, burnished glow across its surface. Almost immediately, passers-by on the street began to slow their steps, transfixed by the antique's allure. Within moments, a small crowd had gathered outside, pointing and murmuring excitedly. Looks like you were right about this being a smart investment, Jenna said with an appreciative whistle. I predict we'll have multiple interested buyers before the day is out. But as Sarah stood back to admire their new prize acquisition, a sudden chill raced down her spine. There, 
reflected in the glass, she could have sworn she glimpsed a flicker of movement in the shadows of the empty shop behind them. A ripple of dark skirts, the edge of a pale hand. She blinked hard and the image vanished, leaving only her own startled face staring back. Did you see that? Sarah asked sharply, her skin prickling with goosebumps. Jenna glanced over, her brow furrowed in confusion. See what? Sarah swallowed against the tightness in her throat. I thought, never mind, it was nothing. She shook her head, trying to dispel the lingering unease. Just a trick of the light. As the two women turned their attention to the gathering crowd of potential customers outside, Sarah couldn't help darting one last look at the mirror out of the corner of her eye. But the glass remained still and unblemished, giving no hint of the dark secrets she feared it might contain. With a deep breath, Sarah pushed her mounting dread aside and pasted on her most charming smile, ready to begin another day in the life of an antiques dealer. Little did she know, it was a day that would change the course of her life forever. Chapter 2 Strange Occurrences Over the next few days, odd things started happening around the mirror. At first, they were subtle enough that Sarah could almost convince herself she was imagining them. A flicker of shadow here, a whisper of cold air there. But as the incidents grew more frequent and more difficult to explain away, an insidious sense of unease began to take root in Sarah's mind. It started with the smell, a cloying, rotting sweetness that seemed to hang in the air around the looking glass. No matter how thoroughly Sarah cleaned, the sickly scent would inevitably return, growing stronger each time. Then there were the sudden cold spots, icy pockets of air that numbed Sarah's fingers as she worked on restoring the delicate gilding of the frame. But most disturbing of all were the faces. Customers would pause before the mirror, admiring their reflections with pleased smiles. And for just a split second, Sarah could swear those smiles turned to twisted masks of terror and anguish before blinking back to normal. It happened so quickly, most people didn't even seem to notice. But Sarah saw, and each haunting glimpse drove the splinter of fear deeper into her heart. As the week wore on, Sarah's worries began to take on the sharp edges of paranoia. She took to whipping around at the slightest sound, convinced something was watching her from the shadowy corners of the shop. Her appetite evaporated, and dark circles formed under her eyes from too many sleepless nights spent tossing and turning, her mind spinning with grotesque visions and half-remembered nightmares. You look like hell, Jenna told her bluntly one morning, her voice laced with concern. Are you coming down with something? Sarah shook her head, forcing a wan smile. Just haven't been sleeping well lately. Probably stress. There was no way she could tell Jenna the real reason for her haggard appearance. The gnawing, insidious fear that had taken up residence in her bones. She'd think Sarah had lost her mind. But as the day wore on and the unsettling occurrences continued to mount, Sarah found herself wondering if perhaps that assessment wasn't too far off the mark. Every instinct was screaming at her to be rid of the mirror, to cast it back into the shadows from whence it came. And yet, some dark compulsion seemed to stop her every time she resolved to remove the looking glass from her shop. It was almost as if the mirror didn't want to be parted from her. By the time she finally locked up for the evening, Sarah's nerves were stretched to the breaking point. She found herself chewing a hangnail on her thumb until it bled, her foot tapping a jittery rhythm against the worn wooden floorboards. She had to do something, anything, to get to the bottom of the mirror's mysteries before she truly went mad. Drawing in a deep, unsteady breath, Sarah crossed to the showcase in the front window, where the mirror sat in pride of place. With trembling fingers, she reached out and lifted away the antique's heavy drape. As the velvet fell away, Sarah let out an involuntary gasp, stumbling back a step. There in the glass, as clear as if the figure were standing before her in the flesh, was the ghostly image of Eleanor Carlyle. The Victorian woman's dark eyes burned with an unspeakable anguish, her pale hands pressed against the inside of the glass, as if trying to break through. And then her lips parted, and though no sound emerged, Sarah could clearly make out the desperate shape of the words, Help me. A sudden wave of dizziness overtook Sarah, and she swayed on her feet, struggling to catch her breath. This was impossible. It had to be some sort of hallucination, a product of her exhausted and suggestible mind. She squeezed her eyes shut for a long moment, willing the specter to vanish. But when she hesitantly cracked one eye open, 
Eleanor's tormented face still stared back at her from the mirror's depths, as real and solid as Sarah's own reflection. An icy wave of terror crashed over Sarah, churning her stomach. This was no trick of the weary mind. The woman in the mirror, whoever she was, was trying to convey a message from beyond the grave. And God help her, Sarah was going to figure out what it was, even if it meant descending into the very darkest corners of her own sanity. Chapter 3. The Discovery Sarah stared at the ghostly figure of Eleanor Carlyle, her heart pounding wildly against her ribcage. This couldn't be happening. Antique mirrors didn't come with tortured Victorian spirits trapped inside, did they? She shook her head vehemently, closing her eyes against the impossibility before her. When she opened them again, she half expected Eleanor to have vanished, proving herself to be nothing more than a figment of an overtired mind. But the specter remained, her gaze boring into Sarah with an intensity that made her shiver. Who are you? Sarah whispered, her voice emerging as a dry rasp. What do you want from me? Eleanor's lips moved soundlessly in response, her expression growing more desperate and tormented with each passing second. A sudden flicker of movement in the shadows behind her caught Sarah's eye and she gasped, leaning forward to peer closer into the glass. For a split second, the image in the mirror seemed to waver and change. The elegant bric-a-brac of Sarah's antique shop melted away, replaced by a dimly lit room with peeling wallpaper and heavy dark furniture. And there, lurking in the background like a malevolent shadow, was the silhouette of a man. Before Sarah could make out any distinguishing features, the scene flipped back to the present, leaving her staring at her own shocked expression superimposed over Eleanor's ghostly face. The effect was deeply unsettling, sending a fresh wave of goosebumps rippling across Sarah's flesh. What the hell? She breathed, pressing a trembling hand to her forehead. For a split second there, she could have sworn she'd been looking straight into the past, seeing a glimpse of Eleanor's life before it had been cut tragically short. Sarah grimaced at the thought, a morbid shudder working its way down her spine. She was no stranger to death. Any antiques dealer worth their salt understood that their wares often came with dark and complex histories. But there was a stark difference between academically knowing your merchandise might have a grim past and seeing evidence of it play out before your very eyes. Questions churned in Sarah's mind, dizzying in their implications. If what she'd seen was real and not just some bizarre hallucination, then that meant that Eleanor Carlyle had died under mysterious, potentially violent circumstances. And judging by the raw anguish and desperation in the ghost's expression, her spirit was still very much tied to this plane, unable to rest. But why now? Why, after over a hundred years, had Eleanor chosen to make her presence known? And what did she want with Sarah, of all people? As if sensing her burning need for answers, the mirror once again seemed to ripple and change. Shadows coalesced in its depths, gradually resolving into a scene of breathtaking beauty and elegance. An opulent dining room swam into focus, lit by dozens of flickering candles. Finely dressed ladies and gentlemen were arrayed around a gleaming table, crystal goblets raised in a toast. And there, at the head of it all, was Eleanor, clad in a sumptuous green silk gown, her dark hair swept up in an intricate coif. For a moment, the Victorian woman's face was alight with happiness, her eyes sparkling with mirth at something one of her guests had said. But then the warmth drained from her expression, as her gaze locked on something just beyond Sarah's line of sight. Eleanor went utterly pale, a shaking hand rising to her throat, as if struggling for air. Her mouth dropped open in a scream that never came, and as abruptly as it had appeared, the vision shattered, sending Sarah reeling back with a strangled cry. She stumbled against a nearby armchair, breathing hard as she struggled to process what she'd just witnessed. That had been no mere glimpse into the past, but a front row seat to what seemed to be the worst moment of Eleanor's life. Sarah raised a badly shaking hand to cover her mouth, horrified realization striking her like a blow. Eleanor Carlyle hadn't just died. If what she'd seen was real, and some inscrutable instinct told her it was, then the poor woman had been murdered. And now, her tormented spirit was crying out across a century, begging for the truth to come to light and for justice to finally be done. With a shuddering breath, Sarah straightened up, a newfound sense of resolve settling over her. She couldn't turn her back on this, not now that she knew the terrible scope of what she'd stumbled into. The secrets hidden in this mirror were dark and dangerous, 
with the power to unravel a history long since buried. But Eleanor Carlyle deserved to have her story told. She deserved peace. And one way or another, Sarah was going to find a way to give it to her, no matter how deep into the haunting shadows of the past she had to tread. Chapter 4. Deepening Mystery Sarah barely slept a wink that night. Every time she closed her eyes, the tormented face of Eleanor Carlyle swam before her, silently pleading for help from beyond the grave. By the time the first rays of watery sunlight began filtering through her curtains, Sarah's conviction had only grown. She had to uncover the truth about what happened to Eleanor, no matter the cost. With grim determination, she threw herself into research, scouring historical records and newspaper archives for any scrap of information about the ill-fated Victorian woman. But frustratingly, solid facts proved scarce. Most of what Sarah found were vague society pages references to Eleanor as a prominent figure in London's upper crust social circles, known for her beauty, wealth, and lavish parties. There were oblique mentions of a scandal involving the Carlyle family in the late 1890s, but any details were conspicuously absent, as if someone had taken great pains to scrub the historical record clean. The more Sarah dug, the more roadblocks she seemed to hit, until she wanted to scream with frustration. It was deep into her second straight night of fruitless searching that Sarah finally stumbled upon a promising lead. She was elbow deep in a dusty box of old papers at the city archives, eyes burning from hours squinting at spidery copper plate writing when a sheaf of yellowed documents caught her eye. It was a collection of personal correspondence, and there at the bottom was the flourishing signature of one Eleanor Carlyle. Heart pounding, Sarah carefully extracted the fragile papers and began to read. Most of the letters were innocent enough, filled with the flowery prose and social niceties typical of upper-class ladies of the era. But one near the end of the pile made Sarah's breath catch in her throat. My dearest Sophia, it began, I hardly know how to put into words the turmoil that grips my heart. I fear I have become entangled in matters far beyond my understanding or control. The rituals we began in jest have taken on a horrible life of their own. I am plagued by dark visions and unnatural visitations, and I begin to despair that my very soul is in peril. I dare not confide the full scope of what haunts me, not even to you, my most trusted friend. But know that I am in grave danger, from both this world and the next. If something should happen to me, promise me you will not let the truth stay buried. The ones responsible must be brought to light and to justice, or I fear my torment shall never end. Yours in desperate hope, Eleanor. Sarah's hands shook as she lowered the brittle paper, her mind reeling. Rituals? Dark visions and unnatural visitations? It sounded like something straight out of a penny-dreadful novel. But paired with the disturbing scene she'd witnessed in the mirror, a woman screaming in abject terror, in the face of some unseen horror, it painted an alarming picture. Just what exactly had Eleanor Carlyle gotten herself mixed up in? And perhaps more importantly, who was responsible for her grim fate? Over the next several days, Sarah redoubled her efforts to find answers, barely pausing to eat or sleep. She scoured genealogy records for any trace of Eleanor's confidant Sophia, hoping to uncover more of their correspondence. She delved into the more unsavory archives, searching out whispered rumor and lurid gossip rags, anything that might shed light on the mysterious scandals of the Carlyle family. Piece by piece, a truly disturbing picture began to emerge. Whispers of occult gatherings in dimly lit parlors, where London's elite dabbled in forbidden rituals and even darker vices. Hints of a powerful man with shadowed eyes and cruel smile, who always seemed to lurk at the edges of the Carlyle family misfortune. And most chilling of all, hushed murmurs that Eleanor's untimely demise was no mere tragedy, but something far more sinister. The more Sarah discovered, the deeper her unease grew. She started to see menacing figures in every shadowy corner, hear sinister whispers in each creaking floorboard of her shop. At night, her dreams were filled with tortured specters and bloody cryptic warnings, leaving her to wake in a cold sweat, Eleanor's name on her lips. It all came to a head one rainy night, as Sarah huddled over her desk, feverishly paging through an old Carlyle family diary. Without warning, all the lights in the shop went out, plunging her into suffocating darkness. Sarah leapt to her feet with a strangled cry, heart pounding as she fumbled blindly for a match to light the lamp. But before she could strike a spark, an icy wind swept through the room, extinguishing the flame on her match. 
Sarah gasped as the temperature plummeted, her breath clouding before her eyes. And there, in the yawning blackness, a figure emerged. A woman, clad in a tattered white nightgown, dark hair streaming in wild tangles around a face twisted with anguish. Her eyes burned with an otherworldly light as she lifted one pale, beseeching hand toward Sarah. Help me, Eleanor Carlyle's specter rasped, her voice echoing with the weight of a hundred lost years. Please, you must help me. Sarah's scream stuck in her throat as the ghostly figure advanced, the mirror rattling violently in its frame behind her. Terror unlike any she'd ever known seized her heart, rooting her to the spot. In that moment, Sarah knew with bone-deep certainty that the mysteries of Eleanor Carlyle would be the death of her, unless she found a way to lay this tortured spirit to rest and uncover the shocking truths that had been buried with her, once and for all. Chapter 5 The First Encounter Sarah's heart hammered against her ribcage as she stared at the ghostly figure of Eleanor Carlyle, her veins flooding with icy terror. The specter's face was a twisted mask of anguish, her eyes burning with unnatural fire. A strangled sound emerged from Sarah's throat, trapped halfway between a gasp and a scream. But even as raw panic threatened to consume her, some deeper instinct kicked in, the stubborn resolve that had carried Sarah through countless challenges in her life. She swallowed hard, forcing her breathing to slow as she took a hesitant step toward the tormented spirit. Eleanor, she said, her voice emerging as a dry rasp. I... I know something terrible happened to you. I want to help, but you have to help me understand. For a long moment, the ghost merely stared at her, ethereal features contorted with pain and despair. Then slowly, haltingly, she began to speak. The mirror, Eleanor whispered, each word heavy with unimaginable sorrow. It was meant to be a conduit, a way to pierce the veil between worlds, but we didn't understand the forces we were invoking. The darkness we unleashed, she shuddered, a fresh wave of anguish washing over her translucent face. It consumed me, body and soul, trapped me in a never-ending hell, reliving my moment of death again and again. The only escape, the only hope for peace, is for the truth to come to light, for justice to be served. Sarah's mind reeled, struggling to process the enormity of what Eleanor was implying. Are you saying you were killed because of something to do with this mirror? Some kind of dark ritual? The ghost nodded jerkily, spectral tears glimmering in her haunted eyes. The ones responsible, they live still. Live and thrive, their sins buried and forgotten. While I remain shackled to my torment. Eleanor's voice rose, taking on a sudden feverish intensity. You must expose what they did, Sarah. Bring their crimes into the light. Only then will my spirit be freed. Only then will I find peace. She began to flicker and fade her form unraveling at the edges. Sarah reached out a hand, desperate to keep her there, to demand more answers. But her fingers passed through the ghost-like mist, leaving only the fading echo of Eleanor's final, pleading words. Help me, Sarah, please, help me. And then she was gone, leaving Sarah alone in the darkened shop, the mirror looming behind her like a waiting abyss. For a long moment, she simply stood there, paralyzed by the enormity of what had just transpired. Eleanor Carlyle had been murdered. Murdered in some sort of occult ritual gone horribly wrong, if Sarah was understanding correctly. And the key to unraveling the truth was the very mirror that now sat in Sarah's possession, humming with dark and terrible energies. Sarah's stomach clenched, a wave of nausea rising in her throat. Part of her wanted to run screaming into the night, to thrust this cursed object and its grim secrets as far away from her as possible. What right did she have to go meddling in such sinister matters? How could she hope to lay to rest a mystery that had stayed buried for over a hundred years? But even as those fears clawed at her mind, Sarah knew in her bones that she couldn't turn her back on this. Not now. Not after seeing the raw agony in Eleanor's eyes, hearing the desperate plea in her voice. This wasn't just a ghost story come to life. It was a cry for help, a tortured soul begging for justice from beyond the grave. And one way or another... Sarah was going to answer that cry. She was going to find out the truth about Eleanor Carlyle's death and bring her killers, however long dead, to account. Even if it meant descending into a world of shadows and nightmares she'd scarcely imagined could be real. Even if it meant putting her own life and sanity on the line. Sarah Bennett wouldn't let this woman's story be forgotten, 
Not again. Not this time. With a deep, shuddering breath, she squared her shoulders and turned to face the waiting mirror. Her reflection gazed back at her, pale and resolute in the dying light. It was time to find some answers, even if she had to tear them out of the darkest reaches of the past, to do it. Chapter 6 Seeking Answers You look like you've seen a ghost, Michael said wryly as Sarah stumbled through the door of their flat, pale and wild-eyed. Sarah let out a strangled laugh, the sound emerging ragged and slightly hysterical. If only he knew how right he was. She'd spent the past twenty minutes wandering the streets in a daze, mind spinning with the impossibilities she'd just witnessed. Part of her had been tempted to simply keep walking, to flee the dark mysteries unfurling before her and never look back. But in the end, she'd forced herself to turn for home, knowing she couldn't face this alone. She needed to tell someone what was happening, if only to assure herself she hadn't completely lost her grip on sanity. Michael, she said hoarsely, dropping down beside him on the couch. I, I think I'm in trouble, like really deep trouble. Her friend frowned, setting aside the book he'd been reading to focus on her fully. What's going on, Sarah? Are you all right? You're shaking. I don't know, she whispered, staring down at her trembling hands. I don't know if anything is all right anymore. Haltingly, she began to tell him everything. The estate sale, the eerie mirror, the ghostly figure of Eleanor Carlyle, and her whispered pleas from beyond the grave. Michael listened intently, his expression shifting from confusion to concern to outright alarm. Wait, he said, holding up a hand. Are you seriously telling me you think you've been contacted by an actual spirit? A real honest-to-God ghost? Sarah bit her lip, hearing how absurd it sounded out loud. I know. I know how crazy this must seem. But Michael, I swear to you, it's real. I saw her. I spoke to her. This is happening. He blew out a long breath, rubbing a hand over his face. Okay, okay, let's just take a step back for a second. Have you considered that maybe this is all just stress? I mean... You've been working non-stop lately, barely sleeping. It's possible your mind is just playing tricks on you. It's not stress, Sarah burst out, frustration and fear sharpening her voice. Do you think I want to believe any of this? I feel like I'm losing my goddamn mind, Michael, but I know what I saw. She closed her eyes, Eleanor's tormented face swimming before her. She was murdered, Michael, murdered, and it had something to do with that mirror. There's this whole history of darkness and secrecy around it, around her. I think... I think I meant to uncover the truth, to help her, somehow. Michael was silent for a long moment, brow furrowed as he mulled over her words. Finally, he reached out to take her hand, his touch gentle and grounding. Okay, he said quietly. I believe you, Sarah. Or at least, I believe that you believe this is real. And if that's the case, then I'm with you. One hundred percent. We'll figure this out together. Tears of relief pricked Sarah's eyes and she squeezed his hand tightly, feeling a tiny spark of hope kindle in her chest. She wasn't alone in this. Whatever horrors lay ahead, whatever dark truths she had to dig up, she had someone by her side. Thank you, she whispered. I don't know what I'd do without you. Michael gave her a small, reassuring smile. Hey, that's what friends are for, right? Sticking together, even when things get weird and spoopy. Sarah huffed a soft laugh in spite of herself, sniffling a little. I love you, you giant nerd. Love you too, Pipsqueak. He slung an arm around her shoulders, pulling her close. Now, what do you say we dig into this whole girl in the magic murder mirror situation and see if we can scare up some non-terrifying explanations, yeah? Sarah nestled into his side, feeling the knot of tension in her chest ease slightly for the first time in days. Michael's steadiness his stubborn refusal to be phased even in the face of the bizarre and inexplicable was exactly what she needed right now. Together, they would chase down the truth, drag Eleanor Carlyle's long-buried secrets into the light. It wouldn't be easy, Sarah knew. The path ahead was shrouded in shadow, steeped in mystery and peril, but she wouldn't have to walk it alone, and that made all the difference in the world. Chapter 7. The Revelation Sleep did not come easy that night. Every time Sarah closed her eyes, the haunting figure of Eleanor Carlyle appeared, sobbing out her desperate pleas for justice from beyond the grave. By the time wan dawn light began filtering through her curtains, Sarah felt more exhausted than when she'd first laid down, her thoughts fuzzy and anxious. 
She needed answers. Real answers. The kind that could only be found by delving deep into the dark history surrounding Eleanor's death. And the cursed mirror at the center of it all. And Sarah knew just where she had to start looking. Two hours later, she found herself striding through the hallowed halls of the British Museum, determination turning her steps hurried and purposeful. She'd always loved coming here as a child, marveling at the grand columns and glittering exhibits. But now, the looming splendor barely registered. She had only one goal in mind, the museum's extensive library and archives, home to all manner of historical records, some dating back centuries. Sarah settled herself at one of the long oak tables in the library's hush, surrounded by towering stacks of dusty tomes and yellowed papers. The familiar scent of aged leather and ink enveloped her, bringing a small measure of comfort amidst her inner turmoil. You've got this, Bennett, she muttered under her breath, cracking open the first book before her. Time to go full Nancy Drew on this bitch. Hour after hour ticked by as Sarah poured over the archives, scouring every source she could find for mentions of Eleanor Carlyle. Genealogies of prominent Victorian families, newspaper reports of London society scandals, obscure occult texts with crumbling pages and sinister illustrations. She chased down every lead, no matter how small or tenuous. It was deep into the afternoon when she finally struck gold. Sarah's pulse leapt as she gingerly extracted a sheaf of fragile papers from the bottom of a box, her fingers trembling with barely repressed excitement. The letters were faded with age, the once bold copper plate script now spidery and difficult to decipher. But one name jumped out at Sarah immediately from the elegantly scrawled signature at the bottom of the page, Eleanor Carlyle. Fighting down a rising sense of trepidation, Sarah carefully unfolded the delicate pages and began to read. Phrases leaped out at her, each more chilling than the last. Seance gone terribly wrong. Strange visions and unnatural visitations. Unleash something dark and hungry. The mirror, it calls to me, a siren song I cannot resist. Sarah's heart raced as the pieces began to fall horribly into place. It seemed Eleanor Carlyle and her social circle had been far more than idle rich playing at the occult for titillating amusement. They had gone farther, dared more than they ever should have, and in doing so, crossed a forbidden line between worlds. The letters spoke of rituals conducted through the mirror, of trying to pierce the veil and access realms beyond mortal ken, all in the pursuit of forbidden knowledge and power, heedless of the consequences. And it seemed that on one fateful night, they had succeeded, but not in the way any of them intended. Sarah's breath caught in her throat as she read Eleanor's increasingly desperate words, a cry for help penned in the final days of her life. It wants me, she had written, her usually elegant script shaky and blotted with what looked horribly like tears or blood. The entity we called forth, it has marked me, covets me, I am to be a vessel for its malevolent hunger. God help me, I fear I shall not survive its embrace. But what chilled Sarah's blood most of all was the passage that came next, the one that named names. If you are reading this, then I am surely dead, and the worst has come to pass. Know that it was Lord Aldrick Davenport who led us down this cursed path, his madness and avarice unleashing hell upon us all. Should the chance arise to bring him to account, I beg you, do not hesitate. Do not let my fate befall another. For all our sakes, stop him. Sarah slowly lowered the letter, ice settling in her bones despite the library's stuffy heat. Lord Aldrick Davenport. The name rang a faint bell, dredging up memories of oil portraits glimpsed on school field trips, a stern face with glittering dark eyes. A prominent politician and business magnate of the Victorian era, his legacy now reduced to the rote lines of a history textbook. But if Eleanor's desperate testimony was to be believed, the man had a far darker, more sinister claim to fame, one that had never made it into the official record. Sarah swallowed hard against a surge of nausea, the pieces of the puzzle clicking together in her mind with sickening clarity. Eleanor Carlyle's death had been no accident, no result of occult dabbling gone awry. She had been murdered, deliberately targeted by the dark forces this Lord Davenport had so foolishly invoked. And if Sarah's hunch was correct, he had used the very mirror she now possessed to do it. With shaking hands, Sarah carefully tucked the letters away, her mind racing. She needed to see that mirror again, to examine it with new eyes now that she knew the sinister history behind it. And she needed to dig deeper into this Aldrich Davenport, 
uncover just how far his crimes extended, and if the evil he'd unleashed had truly died with him. As she hurried out of the archives, a new sense of urgency hastening her steps, Sarah couldn't shake the cold prickle at the back of her neck. The feeling that hungry eyes were watching her from the shadows, cruel and ancient and biding their time. The mirror's dark legacy was unfolding before her, a story written in blood and treachery. She only hoped she'd survive long enough to see it through to the end. Chapter 8. Escalation By the time Sarah made it back to the antique shop, night had fallen, draping the street in heavy shadows. She hastened to the door, fumbling with numb fingers to fit her key into the lock. Her breath plumed before her in the chill air, adrenaline still thrumming through her veins from the horrifying revelations at the museum. But as Sarah finally stumbled inside, the warm familiarity of her shop enveloping her, she stopped dead, ice flooding her stomach. Something was wrong. The atmosphere felt thick and charged. The usually welcoming space now shot through with an unseen menace. And there, in the center of it all, the mirror loomed, its surface seeming to swirl with a hypnotic darkness. What? Sarah whispered, approaching it with hesitant steps. The closer she drew, the more she felt it. A pull, an ineffable magnetism that plucked at her mind, urging her to gaze into fathomless depths. Her hand lifted almost of its own accord, reaching out to brush trembling fingers against the glass. The moment she made contact, the world tilted around her. Sarah gasped as a wave of dizziness crashed over her, sending her staggering back. She blinked hard, trying to clear the black spots dancing before her eyes, and froze. The shop had transformed in the space of that sickening heartbeat. Shelves and furniture that had stood for years were gone, replaced by heavy Victorian trappings, dark wood, and rich brocade. The air was thick with an acrid haze undercut by the metallic tang of blood, and everywhere Sarah looked, spread across every surface, were bones. Human bones, sun-bleached and graven with arcane symbols, arranged in intricate spirals and glyphs that made her gorge rise. In the center of it all, directly before the mirror, knelt a figure, head bowed, hands raised in supplication. Power crackled in the air around them, ancient and hungry. Sarah's scream stuck in her throat, terror seizing her muscles. But even as she stood paralyzed, the kneeling figure stirred, lifting its head to fix her with a piercing stare. Glittering eyes in a cruel, patrician face, lips curled in a smile as cold and pitiless as a razor, Lord Aldrich Davenport. Seeker, he rasped, his voice echoing oddly as if from a great distance. You meddle in matters beyond your ken. Cease your prying or pay the price. Sarah swallowed hard, fear and revulsion roiling within her. I know what you did, she managed, barely recognizing her own voice, thin and strangled. I know about Eleanor, about the rituals. You murdered her for your own twisted games. Davenport's smile sharpened, baring teeth. Foolish child, Eleanor was a means to an end, a shining lure to draw the attention of greater things. Her sacrifice was necessary, as will be yours, in time. He began to rise to his feet, power crackling around him in a miasma of shadow. Sarah stumbled back with a choked cry, raising her hands as if to ward him off. Her mind screamed at her to run, to flee this nightmare before it could drag her into its abyss. But even as terror urged her to action, the world tilted again, a sickening lurch that sent Sarah crashing to her knees. She retched, eyes slamming shut against a blinding wave of vertigo. When she managed to wrench them open again, heart thudding, the shop was restored, not a hair out of place. No bones, no blood, no spirit of a murderous Victorian lord. Just Sarah, alone and gasping on the floor, the mirror placidly reflecting her own wild-eyed face back at her. For a long moment, she simply crouched there, body racked with tremors as she struggled to process what had just happened. Had it been a hallucination, a waking nightmare brought on by the suggestive power of Eleanor's letters, or had she truly been granted a glimpse into the past, into the dark deeds that had set this whole nightmare in motion? Slowly, painfully, Sarah dragged herself to her feet, clutching at a nearby shelf for balance. Her head swam and her stomach churned, black spots still speckling the edges of her vision. But beneath the nausea and disorientation, a new emotion began to flare. Anger. Rage at the callous cruelty of Davenport's words. The cold arrogance in his voice as he spoke of Eleanor's death, as if it were nothing. How many other lives had he destroyed in his mad pursuit of power? 
How many other restless spirits cried out for vengeance against him? Sarah's jaw clenched, her fingers biting into the grooved wood of the shelf. No more, she vowed silently. No more would this evil go unanswered. Davenport and his dark legacy had preyed on the innocent for far too long. It was high time someone dragged them into the light and made them pay for their sins. Even if she had to rip apart the very veil between worlds to do it. With a last hard look at the waiting mirror, Sarah turned and stalked from the shop, a terrible purpose burning in her heart. It was time to go to war. The shadows trembled at her passing. Chapter 9. The Escape Sarah stared at the mirror, at her own pale and haggard reflection gazing back at her. The last few days felt like a surreal nightmare, a plunge into a world where the darkest pieces of history reached out with grasping skeletal fingers to drag the unwary into shadow. She had poured every waking moment into research, into chasing down the sinister threads of Aldrich Davenport's cruel legacy, desperate to find some way out of this maze of horrors. But no matter where she turned, she found only more tragedy, more tales of lives shattered and consumed by the unholy forces he had unleashed. It was as if the man's evil had stained the very fabric of reality, leaving a permanent imprint of malice and suffering. Sarah felt like she was drowning in it, the weight of Eleanor's torment and all those who came after pressing down on her until she could barely breathe. And through it all, the mirror watched, whispered, called to some deep hidden part of her mind in a siren song of promised oblivion. She could feel it even now, the pull of it, the hypnotic sway that urged her closer. It would be so easy to give in, to let the hungry shadows take her as they had so many others. No, Sarah gritted out, tearing her gaze away with an effort that left her trembling. No, I won't. I won't let it end like this. She drew in a deep, shuddering breath, squaring her shoulders as resolve hardened in her chest. She had to get rid of the mirror, had to break its hold over her, sever the connection that let its seductive poison trickle into her thoughts. It was her only chance at escaping this nightmare with her sanity intact. Mind made up, Sarah hurried into action. She gathered up old sheets, thick woolen blankets, anything she could find to swaddle the cursed glass, muffling its insidious whispers. The antique was heavy, far heavier than it had any right to be, but she wrestled it off the wall through a haze of desperate determination, half dragging it to the back door of the shop. Sarah had just managed to manhandle the mirror into the alley behind the store, sweat dripping down her face, breath coming hard, when a voice spoke behind her. Going somewhere. Sarah spun with a choked gasp to see Detective Flynn leaning against the brick wall, arms crossed as he studied her with keen, narrowed eyes. He pushed off the wall with a fluid motion, approaching her with a slow, measured gait. Imagine my surprise, he said casually, coming to a halt a few paces away. When I pop by my old friend Sarah's shop for a bit of a catch-up, only to find her in her back alley at a truly odd hour, wrestling with what appears to be a body-sized parcel, a person might think you were up to something, untoward. His eyes cut to the blanketed mirror, then back to her ashen face. So tell me, Sarah, just what exactly is going on here? Sarah swallowed hard, mind racing as she scrambled for an excuse. I, it's not, I can explain, she managed, voice cracking traitorously. But before she could cobble together anything remotely convincing, a bone-deep chill swept through the night air. Sarah shuddered, the hairs on her arms standing on end as a thick, choking sense of wrongness filled the alley. She knew, even before she turned her head with a creeping dread, what she would see. Shadows. Shadows where there should be none. Long and distorted and moving with a sinuous, predatory intent. They peeled away from brick and stone, swelling and shifting like an oil slick come to hideous life. Sarah's heart seized as cold understanding crashed over her. The mirror. By taking it outside, she had expanded its reach, its influence, given the ravenous entities bound within a greater foothold in the physical world. Even now, she could feel them pressing against the fragile barrier of reality, straining to break through. Flynn, she croaked, not taking her eyes off the advancing dark. Flynn, we need to go, now. But when the detective spoke again, his voice was different colder, crueler, edged with a shadow that churned Sarah's stomach. Oh, I don't think so, he purred, and Sarah looked over to see his eyes filming with an oily black sheen, his lips curled in a smile that held no human warmth. You'll not be going anywhere, little mirror witch, 
Not until we've had our fill of you. Sarah's scream tore through the night as the darkness lunged, skeletal hands grasping, mouths yawning wide and hungry. She tried to run, but her feet were rooted in place, her body no longer her own to command. The shadows swarmed over her, icy and choking, dragging her down into a black abyss of shrieking, gibbering madness. And as Sarah felt the last shreds of her consciousness fray and dissolve, ripped apart by the howling dark, the mirror stood sentinel, waiting, triumphant. Chapter 10. Isolation. Sarah blinked. Slowly, painfully, the world swam into focus around her. Cream-colored walls, stark in the bright fluorescent light, the chemical bite of antiseptic in her nostrils. Scratchy sheets tangled around her legs. For a long, disorienting moment, she couldn't understand where she was, how she had gotten here. Then memory barreled into her like a freight train, stealing the breath from her lungs, the mirror, the alley, the writhing darkness, frigid and alive, dragging her down into a screaming abyss. Sarah bolted upright with a wild gasp, heart slamming against her ribs. She stared around her with wide, uncomprehending eyes, taking in the small room, the white-coated figures bustling past the doorway. A hospital. She was in a hospital. But how? Sarah? A familiar voice, close and concerned. Sarah flinched hard, head whipping around to see Michael rising from a chair at her bedside, tired face creased with worry. Easy, easy, it's okay, you're safe now. She gaped at him, mind still reeling as it tried to make sense of this sudden shift in reality. I... what happened? She croaked, voice rusty and strange in her own ears. How did I get here? Michael's brow furrowed as he studied her, clearly choosing his words with care. I was hoping you could tell me, he said gently. I got a call late last night from the police. They said, they said they'd found you in the alley behind your shop, that you were, that you weren't making much sense, raving about shadows and mirrors. He reached out to take her hand, his fingers warm and solid against her chilled skin. I came straight here. The doctor said you were in shock, kept drifting in and out of consciousness. They had to sedate you. Sarah, what happened last night? Sarah stared at their entwined hands, something cold and leaden settling in her gut. She remembered the darkness, the mind-bending wrongness of it, the abject terror as it consumed her. She remembered Flynn, the cruel curl of his lips, the inhuman void of his eyes. But now, in the stark light of day, under Michael's earnest, worried gaze, it all seemed impossible, like a fever dream, the wild nightmare conjurings of a mind unhinged. Was that what it had been? A hallucination, a mental break under the strain of exhaustion and stress, and Eleanor, the mirror, the seductive call of the abyss, an overwork. Sarah swallowed hard, doubt and dread twisting in her chest. She didn't know what to believe anymore, what was real and what was the product of her own spiraling thoughts. Maybe this was for the best. Maybe she needed to be here, someplace safe and quiet where her damaged mind could heal. I... Her voice wavered, broke. She couldn't bring herself to meet Michael's eyes. I don't know. Everything's so jumbled. I can't... I can't think straight. She saw him exchange a loaded glance with someone over her shoulder, felt a presence at her back. Sarah turned to see a woman in a white coat watching her with a measured, evaluating look. Dr. Klein read the name embroidered on her breast pocket. Psychiatry. Something inside Sarah shriveled. They thought she was crazy, Maybe they were right. Maybe the shadows, the horrors, had been in her head all along. The product of a mind cracked and splintered by darkness, just like Eleanor, Eleanor lost and screaming and oh God, the mirror, the mirror, the mirror. Sarah, Dr. Klein's voice was calm, soothing, the voice you used with injured animals and frightened children. You've been through quite an ordeal. Your mind is trying to protect itself, to make sense of what you experienced. And sometimes when we're under a lot of pressure, our thoughts can play tricks on us, make us see and believe things that aren't really there. She laid a gentle hand on Sarah's wrist, her touch professionally detached. I'd like to help you, if you'll let me. Help you sort through what's real and what's not, so you can begin to heal. Do you think you could do that? Let me help? Sarah stared at her, a yawning emptiness opening up in her chest. Help. Yes, she needed help needed someone to guide her out of this maze of fear and confusion and back to solid ground. 
She felt so lost, so adrift on a sea of shadow and madness. Maybe Dr. Klein could be her lighthouse, her beacon home. But even as Sarah opened her mouth to agree, to beg for the anchor of logic and reason, something stopped her. A flicker of stubborn defiance, buried deep in her bones. A whisper that said this was wrong, that the doctor's soothing words were just another trap, another snare to bind her mind and keep her from the truth. The truth. Eleanor. The mirror. Davenport's vile cruelties. His occult perversions. These things were real, bone-deep certainties that transcended the cold comfort of sterile rationality. Sarah knew it, believed it, with every fiber of her being, and she couldn't let them take that from her. She couldn't let them bury the horrors she'd uncovered, lock them away as the delusions of a mind unwell. Too much was at stake. Too many lost souls crying out for justice, for peace. No, Sarah whispered, something hardening in her chest even as Michael and Dr. Klein exchanged alarmed glances over her head. She looked up at them, met their eyes with a steady, unflinching gaze. No, she said again, stronger now, conviction thrumming in her veins. I know what I saw, what I learned. I'm not crazy and I won't let you convince me otherwise. I started this and I'm going to finish it. Sarah, Michael began, alarmed note creeping into his voice. What are you talking about? Finish what? You need to rest, to let the doctors help you sort this out. No, Michael. Sarah pushed herself fully upright, ignoring the wave of dizziness that crashed over her at the sudden motion. I know how this looks, how it sounds, but I swear to you, it's real, all of it. Eleanor, Davenport, the mirror, it's all connected, and I can't just let it go. She gripped his hand tight, willing him to understand, to believe. Something evil happened back then, something that's still echoing through to today. I'm the only one who knows the truth, the only one who can stop it. Listen to yourself, Michael pleaded, distress etching deep lines into his face. Sarah, this obsession, it's consuming you. You're talking about things that can't possibly be real, Victorian ghosts and magic mirrors and... I thought you said you believed me. Sarah fought to keep the betrayal from her voice, the sting of tears from her eyes. I thought you had my back. I do, of course I do, but this... He gestured helplessly at the hospital room, the machines softly beeping in the background. This is too much. You're sick, Sarah. You need help. What I need, Sarah gritted out, pulling her hand free of his grasp, is for you to trust me. I'm not crazy, Michael, and I'm not some damsel in distress for you to bundle away and shield from the big bad world. I know my own mind. She looked to Dr. Klein, fixing the woman with a steady, unyielding stare. I appreciate your concern, doctor, but I won't be requiring your services. I'm discharging myself, today. The psychiatrist frowned, clearly unhappy with this turn of events. Miss Bennett, I really must advise against that. You've undergone a severe psychological strain. Your mental state is... is my own damn business, Sarah cut her off, swinging her legs over the side of the bed. The movement made her head swim, her vision tunneling alarmingly, but she gritted her teeth and pushed through it. She'd endured worse these last weeks. She could handle a little vertigo. Sarah, please, Michael tried again, something broken and desperate in his tone. Don't do this. Don't push us away. We only want what's best for you. For a moment, Sarah almost wavered, almost let herself sink into the comfort of his concern, the tempting abdication of responsibility. It would be so easy to just drift and let others take charge, let them soothe her and sedate her and tell her what was real. But she couldn't. Too much depended on her, on the truth she'd unearthed. Eleanor's tormented spirit, the other victims of Davenport's depravity, they had waited long enough for justice, for peace. She couldn't fail them now. Sarah stood, locking her knees against the tremor that wanted to run through them. She looked from Michael to Dr. Klein, grave resolution etched into every line of her. I know you do, she said quietly, and I love you for it. But this is something I have to do. Something I have to see through to the end, whatever it takes. She drew a deep breath, the words heavy and momentous on her tongue. A vow. An oath. I started this, and I'll be damned if I let Davenport win, in this life or any other. And with that, Sarah Bennett walked out of the hospital room, out of the clinging hands of fear and doubt and well-meaning constraint. She had work to do. Worlds to save. Monsters to fight. 
wrongs to set right, and not even the hungry shadows or the concerned hearts of those she loved would stop her. Not now, not ever. Look out, Aldrich Davenport, she thought grimly as she strode into the harsh light of day, purpose thrumming in her blood. I'm coming for you. Chapter 11. Confrontation The Carlisle estate loomed before Sarah, a hulking silhouette against the leaden sky. She shivered as an icy wind knifed through her inadequate jacket, a winter chill that had nothing to do with the seasons. Everything about this place felt wrong, the air thick with a miasma of malice and ancient hunger. It seeped into her bones, wrapped barbed tendrils around her hammering heart. But Sarah gritted her teeth and pushed forward, her boots crunching on the frost-rimed gravel of the drive. She'd come too far to turn back now, endured too much to let fear stop her at this final threshold. This ended tonight, one way or the other. It had taken every scrap of her flagging strength, every ounce of desperate cunning, but she'd managed to flee the hospital undetected, to collect the tools she needed for this last confrontation. An athame of blessed silver, vials of holy water and sanctified salt, sprigs of rowan and rue, a stubborn flickering hope that her cobbled together rituals would be enough. They had to be enough. The alternative, Sarah shuddered, remembering the phantom sensation of skeletal fingers, of icy shadows forcing themselves down her throat into the secret corners of her mind. No, she would not let them take her, would not let the mirror and its vile master claim another victim. Even if it killed her, she would see this through. The front door of the manor swung open at her touch, hinges shrieking a rusted welcome. Sarah stepped over the threshold with a hammering heart, senses straining against the gloom. She moved cautiously down the foyer, the only light a guttering flame cupped in her shaking palm. The house seemed to watch her, a malevolent presence prickling across her skin. Shadows writhed in the corners of her vision, toothy and grasping. The stench of decay, of marrow-deep rot, filled her nostrils, stung her eyes. But still Sarah pressed on, following the winding halls, the intuition pulling her feet along a path walked by far too many women before her. She reached the top of a grand staircase, breath rasping in her throat. A long gallery stretched before her, portraits adorning the walls. Their eyes seemed to follow her, painted mouths twisting into cruel smiles. Sarah shuddered and hurried down the passage. And there, at the very end, the mirror, huge and dark and awful, thrumming with a vicious, unspeakable force. Sarah's knees nearly buckled at the sight of it, the waves of malevolence pouring off the glass, the gilded frame. Every instinct screamed at her to run, to flee this cursed place and never look back. But she couldn't. Not now. Not when she was so close to the truth, to laying Eleanor and all the lost shades that followed to rest. Sarah steeled herself, wrapped all her stubborn will around her thundering heart, and stepped into the room. Immediately the temperature plummeted, hoarfrost crackling across the walls, the floor. Sarah's breath plumed before her, crystallizing on her lashes, her lips. She forced wooden legs to carry her closer to the mirror, the dark glass seeming to swirl and undulate, hungry for her approach. I know you're there, you bastard, she called out, her voice cracking like a whip in the frigid air. I know what you did, to Eleanor, to all of them. It ends now, do you hear me? For a long moment, there was only silence, underscored by the mournful howl of the wind outside. Then slowly, a figure began to take shape in the mirror, the same one Sarah had seen in her vision, cruel and cold and drenched in vicious power. Lord Aldrich Davenport smiled out at her, a shark's grin, all teeth and ravening hunger. You dare much, little girl, he hissed, his voice echoing oddly, as if from the bottom of a deep well. Meddling in matters beyond your comprehension, I should snuff out your insignificant life like the guttering candle it is. Sarah raised her chin, refusing to let him see her fear, the fine tremors running through her limbs. I know everything, she bit out, the rituals, the sacrifices, how you use this mirror to trap innocent souls to feed the, the thing you serve. It's over, Davenport. I won't let you hurt anyone else. He laughed, a skittering chitinous sound that scuttled down her spine. Foolish child, you understand nothing. This paltry world, these fragile mortal bodies, they are fleeting, transient. But what dwells beyond? His eyes flashed with a terrible fervor, a fanatic zeal. 
The power there is eternal, unfathomable, and it hungers. Davenport ran a black-nailed finger down the surface of the mirror, a lover's caress. Through this glass I have touched the face of the divine, offered up sweet sacrifices to slake its endless thirst. Eleanor and all the shining girls who came after, they were but stepping stones to glory, to transcendence. He fixed Sarah with a look of cruel contemplation, a spider regarding a fly struggling in its web. And you will be the sweetest savor of all, the offering that opens the final gate, that lets the never-dying one step through at last, to reshape this ripe world in its glorious image. No. Sarah's voice shook, but her gaze was steel. She reached into her coat, fingers closing around the hilt of the athame, the icy burn of the silver. I won't be a part of your insanity. You're a monster, Davenport, a twisted evil creature that has to be stopped. She raised the blade, letting the light catch on the runes etched into its surface. And I'm going to stop you, for Eleanor, for all of them. Sarah lunged forward with a wild cry, the holy blade slashing through the air, straight for the heart of Davenport's malevolent reflection. The mirror seemed to scream, a high, agonized sound like the shattering of a thousand panes of glass. Light erupted, searing, blinding, a conflagration of searing silver radiance. Sarah staggered back with a shriek, the athame tumbling from her blistered fingers. She blinked hard, eyes watering, as she tried to see through the dazzling spots dancing across her vision, and froze. A scream stoppered in her throat. Davenport's figure was gone, but in his place, twisting and howling in the eldritch light, was something else, something monstrous. Chapter 12. The Twist Sarah stared in mute, slack-jawed horror at the twisting mass of shadows boiling within the mirror's frame. It was massive, its form straining against the confines of the glass like a grotesque parody of birth. Inky tendrils lashed and coiled, seeking egress into the world beyond their glittering prison. Bubbling flayed strips of knot flesh pulsed and undulated in a nauseating rhythm, weeping black ichor. But worst of all was the eyes. Glowing pits of sulfurous flame, they burned with a cruel intelligence and insatiable hunger as they fixed on Sarah's trembling form. In their baleful depths, she saw the death of worlds, the gnawing abyss that waited to swallow all light and life and hope. This, Sarah realized with a sickening lurch of her stomach, was the true face of the entity Davenport served. The crawling chaos he had sought to unleash on the unsuspecting world, using the mirror as a conduit. A bridge between realms that should never, ever touch. And she had led it straight to the place of power it needed to break through. No, Sarah whispered, numb lips struggling to form the word. No, this can't be happening. The thing in the mirror seemed to laugh, a skittering, chittering sound like the rasp of a million venomous insects. It pressed itself against the barrier of the glass, smoky tendrils questing hungrily for the weakening edges of its prison. Sarah could feel it, the mirror's dark enchantments fraying, buckling under the strain of the entity's onslaught. It was only a matter of moments before the bindings shattered entirely and the thing poured itself through, a tide of devouring shadow and madness, and she had no way to stop it. A choked sob worked its way out of her chest, despair crashing over her like a frigid wave. She had failed, failed Eleanor, failed all the lost souls ensnared by this nightmare, failed the world she had fought so hard to save, all her efforts, all her pain and sacrifice, for nothing. The shadows lunged against the mirror's surface with renewed frenzy, the glass fracturing, popping under their assault. Sarah flinched back with a cry, raising her hands as if to ward off the inevitable. Hot tears streamed down her cheeks, terror and hopeless fury mingling into a searing knot beneath her breastbone. I'm sorry, she keened in a shattered whisper. Eleanor, I'm so sorry. And then, through the howling chaos, through the shattering glass and the ravening dark, a voice rang out, clear and strong and achingly familiar. Sarah! Sarah's head snapped up, eyes wide with shock. There, standing in the doorway, haloed by the guttering light of the hall, was Eleanor Carlyle. Not a shade, not a vengeful specter or a fragment of memory, but the woman herself in the flesh, as vibrantly real as the floorboards beneath Sarah's feet. She was clad in a simple white nightgown, dark hair tumbling in wild curls around a pale, starkly beautiful face. The same face Sarah had seen contorted in fear and agony, lost to the devouring dark. But now... Eleanor's eyes blazed with a fierce, determined light, 
her chin raised in defiance against the shrieking entity clawing its way into the world. Eleanor, Sarah breathed, hardly daring to believe her own eyes. How? How are you? The mirror was the key, Eleanor said urgently, crossing to Sarah's side, heedless of the tenebrous shape straining towards them. Davenport thought it was just a doorway, a way to feed his foul master, but it was also my prison. Shattering it set me free. Her mouth twisted in a hard, humorless smile. A taste of his own medicine, using his vile tools against him. She turned to face the howling vortex, shadows painting eerie patterns across the elegant angles of her face. And now it's time to end this, once and for all. Sarah gaped at her, adrenaline and wild hope surging through her veins. But how? She asked desperately. What can we possibly do against... Against that? Eleanor reached out, her slender fingers interlacing with Sarah's, solid and shockingly warm. Power thrummed through the joining, a pure, brilliant light that seared the shadows, drove them shrieking back. We stand, Eleanor said simply. We stand and we fight. You freed me, Sarah. Freed my mind, my will. I won't let that monster feed on any more innocent souls. This is my battle. Our battle. And by all that's holy, we will win it. She turned to pin Sarah with that piercing, luminous gaze, the force of her conviction blazing like a newborn star. I couldn't do this alone, then or now, but together. Her fingers tightened on Sarah's, a lifeline, a binding. Together we are stronger than the dark. And Sarah, staring into those bright, fearless eyes, believed her. The despair, the sickening certainty of defeat that had crushed the breath from her lungs. It fell away, replaced by something fierce and unshakable. Faith. Resolve. The soul-deep knowledge that this was where she was meant to be. This was the purpose that had driven her, through all the pain and fear and darkness. To stand against the abyss. To fight for the light. And to do it at Eleanor Carlyle's side, the woman she had risked everything to save. Together, Sarah echoed, the word of vow an oath as she turned to face the boiling shadows once more. She could feel it now, the power humming through their joined hands, a white-hot beacon against the dark. It filled her, straightened her spine, lit her up from within until she was incandescent, unafraid, ready. Hand in hand, Sarah Bennett and Eleanor Carlyle stepped forward to meet the writhing tide of living darkness. And as they did, a single thought crystallized in Sarah's mind, hard and bright as a diamond, a promise, a prayer. The light always conquers the dark. And they were the light. Chapter 13. Regrouping. The mirror exploded. One moment, the ravening entity was hurling itself against the weakening barrier with renewed fury, the glass screaming, buckling under the assault. The next, a searing flash of light erupted from the joined hands of Sarah and Eleanor, a blazing lance that pierced the heart of the seething mass of shadows. A high, ululating wail shattered the air, the sound of an ancient evil shrieking in unfathomable agony. The force of the blast hurled Sarah and Eleanor backward, sending them sprawling across the floor in a tangle of limbs. Dimly, through the ringing in her ears, Sarah registered the sharp bite of shattered glass raining down around them, the cloying stench of burnt corruption that seared her nostrils. For a long, stunned moment, she simply laid there, chest heaving as she struggled to process the enormity of what had just happened. Slowly, painfully, she levered herself up onto her elbows, blinking hard to clear the spots dancing across her vision. The mirror, what was left of it, lay in a twisted heap of glass and gilt in the center of the room. Tendrils of greasy smoke wafted from the ruined frame, acrid and stinging. Of the entity it had housed, the seething knot of darkness and hunger. There was no sign, just an echoing absence, a yawning void where its malevolent presence had been. Is... is it over? Sarah croaked, hardly daring to hope. Did we... destroy it? At her side, Eleanor pushed herself shakily to her feet, bits of glass tinkling from the folds of her nightgown. In the shimmering aftermath of their power's eruption, she seemed to blaze from within, an avenging seraph clad in light. She stared down at the shattered mirror, her face a mask of fierce concentration. No, she said at last, the word leaden with grim certainty. We heard it badly, but an entity that ancient, that powerful, it will take more than a single blow to end it for good. But the mirror, Sarah started, gesturing to the ruined remains, was a conduit, nothing more. 
We cut off its path into this world, but the thing itself... Eleanor shook her head, tattered curls swaying. It's weakened, diminished, but it still exists, and it will be seeking a new way to break through, now more than ever. Sarah stared at her, horror and exhaustion warring in her chest. So this was all for nothing, she rasped, the words aching in her throat. We're right back where we started. No. Eleanor turned to face her fully, eyes blazing with that light, that unflinching resolve. We showed that creature it can be hurt, can be beaten back. That's no small thing, Sarah. She crossed to the younger woman's side, clasping her shoulders in an adamant grip. Evil like that, it's used to being unopposed, to slithering in shadow and preying on the fearful and alone. But we stood against it, together. That's a power in itself. Sarah swallowed hard, moisture prickling at the corners of her eyes. I'm just... I'm so tired, Eleanor. It feels like every time we make a step forward, the darkness is right there, dragging us a dozen back. I know. Eleanor's grip gentled, her calloused thumb brushing a smudge of soot from Sarah's cheek. Believe me, I know. But Sarah, you can't give in to despair. Not now. Not after everything you've done, everything you've overcome to get here. She gazed down at the shattered mirror, the twist of her mouth echoing a hundred other pains, a hundred other battles. I let that thing break me once. Let it take everything I was, everything I could have been. I won't let it do the same to you or to anyone else. Conviction thrummed in her low, fierce voice, steel and fire. This was a victory, Sarah, hard won and precious. We hurt the enemy, we thwarted its plans, and we did it side by side. Two women the world tried to break. She smiled then, sudden and heart-stoppingly bright. If that's not cause for hope, I don't know what is. Almost against her will, Sarah felt an answering smile tug at the corners of her mouth, some of the leaden weight lifting from her shoulders. Eleanor was right. They had struck a blow this day, shattered the mirror and the vile entity's foothold in this world. It wasn't the end, not by a long road, but it was a start, a damn good one. So what now? She asked, squaring her shoulders. What's our next move? Eleanor's grin sharpened, taking on a predatory edge. Now? We regroup. We research. We scour every inch of Davenport's vile legacy, unearth every scrap of lore about the thing he served. She linked her arm with Sarah's, tugging her towards the door, towards the first guttering rays of a new dawn creeping over the horizon. And when we find it, find the shape of its corruption in this world, we end it, once and for all. Sarah let out a shaky laugh, adrenaline and relief and the first stirrings of something like real hope fizzing through her blood. I thought you said it would take more than a single blow. Oh, it will, Eleanor agreed, the morning breeze whipping color into her wasted cheeks. But that's all right. The two of us? We're more than a single blow. She turned to Sarah, the dawn turning her eyes to living flame, shining and depthless. We're an army, a reckoning, the light against the dark. The mirror breakers, Sarah whispered, the shape of it sweet and right on her tongue. Aye, Eleanor breathed. The mirror breakers. Her hand found Sarah's, calloused palm pressing against calloused palm, warrior to warrior, sister to sister. And we've got work to do. Chapter 14 The Plan Sarah stared down at the myriad of maps and documents spread across the kitchen table, her eyes gritty with exhaustion. She had lost track of how many pots of coffee she and Eleanor had consumed, how many hours they had poured over the esoteric research. It could have been days. It could have been years. Time seemed to have little meaning in the face of their desperate quest. There has to be something we're missing, she muttered, pushing a hand through her tangled hair. Some connection, some clue to where that thing might try to break through next. Eleanor looked up from the arcane tome she was hunched over, a furrow etched deep between her brows. In the harsh light of day, the toll of her long imprisonment was starkly apparent. The hollows beneath her cheekbones, the paper-thin translucence of her skin. But her eyes still blazed with that unquenchable fire, that diamond-hard resolve. Davenport was meticulous, she said grimly. He'd been planning this for years, decades even. The mirror wasn't his only gambit. I'd stake my life on it. Sarah bit her lip, a thought niggling at the back of her mind. What about his business dealings? His political connections? If he was really trying to pave the way for this... entity... He would have needed temporal power too, right? 
influence in the physical world. Eleanor blinked, a sudden light kindling in her tired eyes. Sarah Bennett, you're a genius, she breathed. Of course, of course that's what he was doing, insinuating himself into the halls of power, shaping events to his foul master's design. She lunged for a nearby stack of papers, rifling through them with feverish intensity. The factory bill he pushed through Parliament in 86, the slum expansion in Whitechapel, all those public works projects that displace thousands. Sarah, what if they weren't just the callous doings of a ruthless businessman? What if there was a pattern, a purpose behind them? Putting the pieces in place for the entity to gain a foothold, Sarah finished, horrified understanding crashing over her like a wave. Weakening the barriers between our world and, and whatever hellish plane that thing calls home. She shoved her chair back, sending it skittering across the worn floorboards. We need to get back out there, retrace Davenport's steps, reconstruct his movements leading up to... Sarah swallowed hard, the words sticking in her throat like shards of glass. Leading up to your imprisonment in the mirror, there has to be a trail, something we can use to predict the creature's next move. Eleanor nodded sharply, already gathering up the relevant documents, the maps marked with cryptic sigils and hastily scrawled notations. I'll take his business holdings, his political maneuverings, you focus on the occult angle. See if you can find any lore on preferred sites for otherworldly incursions. The kind of metaphysical terrain this thing might seek out for a ritual. I've got a contact at the British Museum, Sarah said slowly, a plan taking shape in her racing mind. Dr. Ashford, in the Antiquities Department, we've consulted on some of the weirder historical finds that have come through my shop. If anyone can point us in the right direction research-wise, it's him. She glanced at the clock on the wall, mentally calculating. The museum's closed now, but I can be there as soon as it opens. Assuming... Sarah trailed off, a sudden spike of uncertainty piercing her growing excitement. She turned to Eleanor, taking in the other woman's wasted frame, the bruised crescents beneath her flashing eyes. Will you be okay on your own? I hate to leave you after everything. Eleanor waved a dismissive hand, a ghost of a smile flitting across her drawn face. I'm a big girl, Sarah. I can handle a few hours of research without a nursemaid. The smile sharpened, taking on a flinty edge. Besides, I've got a score to settle with Aldrich Davenport. Even if the bastard's dead and gone, I intend to rip apart everything he built, salt the very earth of his vile legacy. She reached across the table, fingers brushing Sarah's in a fleeting touch that seared like a brand. You do what you need to do. Chase down those leads, Grill your museum man for every scrap of information he's got. I'll be here when you get back, ready for the next step. Sarah swallowed past the sudden tightness in her throat, the prickle of tears behind her eyes. In that moment, the full magnitude of what they were attempting crashed over her anew. Two damaged, desperate women standing alone against a tide of darkness older than time. It should have been absurd. It should have been hopeless. But staring into Eleanor's blazing eyes, feeling the iron certainty in the set of her shoulders, the unwavering faith in their cause. Sarah felt only a wild, reckless surge of determination, of belief, against all odds, against all sane reason. She believed they could do this, believed that together they could find a way to banish this evil back to the abyss that spawned it. They were the mirror breakers, the light in the darkness, and they would not, could not, fail. Okay, Sarah said, the word emerging low and fierce. Okay, I'll be back as soon as I can with whatever Dr. Ashford can give me. She stood shrugging into her coat with a renewed sense of purpose burning in her chest. But Eleanor, if anything feels off while I'm gone, anything at all, you call me, understand? We're in this together now. Eleanor smiled again, a real smile this time, bright and sharp as a blade. Aye, together. Now go on, Sarah Bennett. Go find us the tools we need to save the world. And Sarah went, the fire of Eleanor's conviction blazing like a beacon in her heart. Chapter 15. The Sacrifice The acrid stench of burning herbs stung Sarah's nostrils as she burst through the front door of her flat, the wards vibrating with palpable menace. Dread coiled icy fingers around her pounding heart as she took in the scene before her. The cramped living space was in chaos. Furniture upended, books and papers scattered like fallen leaves. And there, in the center of it all, Eleanor knelt in a circle of flickering black candles, her head bowed, 
her lips moving in a soundless chant. Arcane symbols painted in what looked horribly like blood glistened wetly on the warped floorboards around her. Eleanor! Sarah's voice emerged, strangled, cracking with fear. What are you doing? The other woman's head snapped up, her eyes fathomless black pits in the guttering candlelight. For a moment, she seemed to stare straight through Sarah, as if she were nothing more than a shade, an irrelevant flicker. Then slowly, awareness seeped back into her gaze, the unholy darkness receding. Sarah, she rasped, her voice rougher than Sarah had ever heard it. You're back. Did you... did you find anything? At the museum? Yes, maybe, but that's not... Sarah cut herself off, panic clawing at her throat as she took a halting step closer to the macabre tableau. Eleanor, what is this? What's going on? Eleanor looked down at the symbols surrounding her, something bleak and resigned settling over her wasted features. What has to be done? She said softly. What I should have done a long time ago. Sarah shook her head, denial surging up to choke her. I don't understand. We have a plan. We were going to research Davenport's movements, find a way to predict the entity's next... It's here, Sarah. Eleanor's words fell like lead weights into the sudden, ringing silence. The thing we fought, the evil we thought we'd weakened, I can feel it, pressing against the edges of this world, straining to break through. She lifted a shaking hand, the sleeve of her dress falling back to reveal the latticework of scars, crisscrossing her wrist, her forearm. Scars left by the mirror's vicious claws, by a hundred years of torment in the dark. I'm still connected to it, you see, Eleanor whispered, bound by blood and pain and all the vile rites Davenport used to trap me. That connection goes both ways. Horror dawned in the pit of Sarah's stomach, a yawning chasm opening up beneath her feet. You're using yourself as bait, she breathed, drawing it to you so you can, can finish what we started. Eleanor's smile was a jagged, wretched thing, tears sparkling unshed in her haunted eyes. I told you, Sarah, I won't let that thing take anyone else, never again. But the cost... Sarah could barely force the words out past the anguish constricting her chest, the fury and grief and shattering understanding. Eleanor, if you go through with this, you'll... I know. The other woman's voice was leaden with sorrow, with grim acceptance. I know the price, Sarah, but it's one I'm willing to pay, one I have to pay, if I ever want to be free. She straightened her spine, lifted her chin in a gesture of unshakable resolve, of defiance in the face of devouring dark. I've been running from this fate for over a century, hiding, begging for scraps of hope, of respite. But you showed me a better way. You taught me how to fight. Eleanor reached out, her fingers hovering just above the invisible barrier of the warding circle. You saved me, Sarah Bennett. In every way a person can be saved. Now let me do the same for you, for everyone. No. The word tore out of Sarah, raw and ragged. She lunged forward, hands scrabbling uselessly against the wards, the crackle of eldritch energy scorching her palms. No, Eleanor, please, you can't do this. We'll find another way. We'll... Sarah. The name was a sigh, a prayer, an apology, and a farewell woven into a single broken thread. It's all right. This is my choice. The only choice. The only chance we have. Eleanor closed her eyes, the first glimmer of tears tracing slow, shining tracks down her sunken cheeks. I wish we had more time. I wish I could have shown you the depth of my gratitude, my... my love. Because I do, Sarah, with every fractured piece of my heart. I love you. The air began to shimmer, to warp around the blood-inscribed symbols, a rising thrum of power building in the marrow of Sarah's bones. Shadows swelled at the edges of the room, hungering, grasping, alive with a writhing malevolence. The fetid stench of rotting flowers clogged her nostrils, her throat, Eleanor, Sarah sobbed, scrabbling against the barrier, fighting with every fiber of her being to reach the other woman, to pull her back from this precipice. Eleanor, no! The shadows lunged, coalesced into a seething, ravening mass that descended on the kneeling woman like a crashing wave. Eleanor's back arched, her mouth opening in a soundless scream as the darkness poured into her, through her, devouring her from the inside out. And then, in a blaze of searing white radiance, a deafening crack of thunder, the world exploded. Sarah was hurled backwards by the shockwave, slamming into the far wall with bone-shattering force. 
For a long, stunned moment, she could only lie there, ears ringing, vision tunneling as she struggled to suck air into her battered lungs. Slowly, painfully, she pushed herself up onto her elbows, blinking hard against the stinging smoke that filled the flat. At first, she couldn't make sense of what she was seeing. The warding circle was a scorched ruin, the candles nothing more than puddles of bubbling tallow, and in the center of it all... Eleanor! Sarah's scream was a broken, wretched thing as she half-crawled, half-stumbled to the other woman's side. Eleanor lay crumpled amidst the ruin, her body twisted at an impossible angle, the front of her dress a charred and blackened ruin. No, 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 Sarah chanted, gathering the limp form into her arms, her hands shaking violently as she brushed matted curls back from a face gone slack and still. Eleanor, please don't do this. Don't you dare leave me. But even as the words left her mouth, Sarah knew it was too late, could feel the terrible absence in the body cradled against her chest, the utter stillness where the vital spark should be. Tears blurred her vision, grief rising up to choke her like a living thing. Eleanor Carlyle was gone. She had given her life, her very soul, to drive back the darkness one last time, to sever the connection, break the mirror that had held her trapped for so long. And in doing so, she had saved them all. But God, the cost, the awful, unthinkable cost. A broken sob tore its way out of Sarah's chest, the pain of it ripping her open from throat to navel. She rocked the body in her arms, tears falling like rain to mingle with the blood and ash streaking Eleanor's ravaged skin. I'm sorry, Sarah wept, pressing her forehead to the dark ruin of the other woman's brow. I'm so sorry, Eleanor. I couldn't save you. I couldn't... Couldn't what? couldn't stop her from making this sacrifice, this awful choice, couldn't find another way, a path that didn't end in sorrow and loss and the shattering ache beneath her ribs that felt like it would tear her to pieces? Sarah didn't know. All she knew was that Eleanor was gone and the world would never be whole again, never be right. In the distance, sirens began to wail, the pop and crackle of flames creeping closer as the explosion's destruction spread. Sarah ignored them, ignored the shouts of alarm from the street below, the acrid bite of smoke in her lungs. None of it mattered. Nothing mattered, except the broken body in her arms, the gaping void in her heart where a blazing light had once been, somewhere deep in the darkest corners of Sarah's ravaged soul. A last, guttering spark of defiance ignited, a tiny, sputtering ember of rage and grief and ironclad resolve. Eleanor had given everything to push back the darkness, to buy them one more chance. Sarah would be damned if she let that sacrifice, that shining courage, be in vain. The fight wasn't over, not now, not ever, not while Sarah Bennett still drew breath. Slowly, gently, she lowered Eleanor's body to the scorched floorboards, her fingers trembling as she arranged the other woman's limbs, smoothed the singed and bloodied tatters of her dress, a night's repose for the bravest warrior Sarah had ever known. Rest now, she whispered, pressing one last shattered kiss to the cold swell of Eleanor's brow. You've earned it, my love, my friend, my sister in arms. Sarah stood, grief and purpose crystallizing into diamond certainty in her chest. She would mourn later, would keen and rail and rend her garments when the battle was done. But first, first, she had work to do. Evil still lurked in this world, hunger and malice and corruption given form and purpose. The mirror may have been shattered, the connection severed, but the entity behind it, the vast and seething dark, that remained, weakened, diminished, but still a festering cancer at the heart of reality. Sarah would not let it endure, would not let the horrors Eleanor had endured, the torment Sarah herself had witnessed, continue to fester unchecked. She had been given a mission, a calling seared into her very marrow. Aldrich Davenport and all his ilk every foul acolyte and twisted votary of the dark, their reckoning was coming. The scales would be balanced, the innocent avenged, if it was the last thing Sarah did. For Eleanor. For the lost and the broken and the ones who could still be saved. Sarah Bennett straightened her spine, lifted her chin in unbowed defiance against the rising dark. The Mirror Breaker's war had only just begun, and come hell or eldritch horror, she would see it through to the end. Chapter 16. Preparation The graveyard was silent as a held breath, 
a pall of mist curling between the weathered headstones like a shroud. Sarah moved between the cramped plots and looming mausoleums, her steps leaden, her heart a heavy, aching weight in her chest. It had been two weeks since the explosion, since she'd held Eleanor's lifeless body in her arms and screamed her rage and grief to an uncaring sky. Two weeks of sifting through rubble for answers, of poring over arcane texts and half-legible fragments in search of a way forward, a path through the tangled snare of the enemy's web. But in truth, it felt like a lifetime. Each day an eternity of hollowness, of purpose the only thing driving her beyond the howling abyss of her loss. Eleanor was gone, truly gone, her bright soul snuffed out in a blaze of sacrificial light. And Sarah, Sarah had to find a way to make that sacrifice mean something, to ensure the other woman's death had bought them more than a fleeting reprieve from the dark. The police investigation into the explosion had been mercifully brief, the official ruling one of a tragic gas leak. Sarah had given her statement in a haze of numbness, the words tasting like ashes on her tongue. There was no body to bury, Eleanor's physical form consumed in the conflagration of her last stand. But Sarah had still felt the keen and biting need for some kind of memorial, some tangible marker of the woman who had blazed so brightly in life and death. And so she found herself here, picking her way through the gloom of Highgate Cemetery, a small bronze plaque clutched in white-knuckled fingers. She'd had it engraved with shaking hands, the words stark and simple. Eleanor Carlyle, 1857 to 2024. Beloved friend, valiant warrior. She broke the mirror and freed us all. It wasn't enough. Could never be enough to encompass all that Eleanor had been, all she had meant. But it was something. A tiny flare of light against the vast, unseeing dark. Sarah reached the plot she had chosen. A small, unassuming space beneath a gnarled yew tree. With reverent hands, she dug a shallow hole, nestling the plaque amidst the roots and loam. Tears burned at the backs of her eyes, grief a tidal pull in her throat, but she swallowed them back. Later. There would be time for mourning later when the work was done. For now, now she had to focus, had to hone her mind and her will to a killing edge, a blade of light against the enemy's throat. Slowly, Sarah reached into her bag, withdrawing the objects she'd so carefully gathered. Vials of holy water and grave dirt, consecrated salt and silver, herbs of warding and revealing, each chosen for its occult properties, its potency and the working she had planned. And at the very bottom, wrapped in layers of waxed linen, a single shard of mirror, jagged edge crusted with long-dried blood. Sarah knelt before Eleanor's makeshift shrine, the artifacts of her war arrayed around her. She closed her eyes, a strange, eerie calm settling over her like a mantle. She had preparations to make, rituals to perform, rites of seeking and scrying, of shielding her mind and bolstering her will. She would need every scrap of power, every ounce of protection she could muster for what lay ahead. Because the next time Sarah faced the entity that had stolen Eleanor from her, the ancient malevolence that even now strained to rip its way into this world, she would be ready, armed to the teeth with all the tools at her disposal, all the knowledge she could glean from forbidden tomes and whispered lore. And this time, this time she would not falter, would not fail, for Eleanor and for every soul that hung in the balance. Sarah Bennett would wage this war to the bitter end, and she would not stop until the enemy lay broken at her feet, cast back into the abyss that spawned it. No matter the cost, no matter the scars it left upon her own tattered soul, she was the mirror-breaker now, the light against the shadows. And she would see this through, even if it damned her, even if it killed her. Slowly, Sarah opened her eyes, grave dirt smeared across her palms, Salt and silver gripped tight between white-knuckled fingers. She laid her offerings before Eleanor's plaque, a wordless promise, an unbreakable vow. Then she rose to her feet, purpose thrumming through her veins like molten iron, and turned her face to the rising dark. It was time to hunt some monsters. Chapter 17 The Resolution The factory squatted at the murky edge of the Thames like a hulking beast, its chimneys belching smoke into the soot-stained sky. Sarah moved through the shadows clinging to its crumbling walls, every sense straining, every nerve alight and humming with tension. This was where the trail had led her, after weeks of desperate research and grueling rituals, of scrying mirrors and esoteric maps. Aldrich Davenport's last great endeavor, 
the project he had poured his ill-gotten wealth and occult knowledge into in those final years before Eleanor's imprisonment. A vast, sprawling complex of brick and iron dedicated to the production of mirrors, its furnaces churning out reflective surfaces by the thousands to be shipped all across the British Empire. But Sarah knew now that was only ever a front, a blind to hide Davenport's true purpose. This place had been a temple to his dark master, a nexus of profane energies and unspeakable rites. Every mirror birthed in its bowels had been anointed with blood and foul sorceries, each one a tiny shard of the great working, the monumental web Davenport had woven to draw his dread lord into the world. The factory had been shuttered for over a century, abandoned in the chaotic aftermath of Eleanor's final confrontation with her tormentor. But Sarah could still feel the echoes of what had been wrought here, the malevolent thrum that pulsed beneath her feet like a black, diseased heart. Somewhere within those moldering walls, in lightless vaults and winding passages, lay the key to the entity's undoing. The central focus of Davenport's great rite, the mirror into which he had poured the very essence of his dark patron. If Sarah could find it, could shatter it beyond repair and scatter the shards to the ends of the earth, then perhaps, just perhaps, the connection would be severed for good. The entity banished, its grip on this world broken at last. It was a desperate hope, a fraying thread of possibility. But it was all Sarah had left, all she could cling to in the yawning abyss of her grief and rage and ironclad resolve, for Eleanor, for the chance to see this through, to finish what the other woman had started so long ago. Sarah would storm the very gates of hell itself. Drawing in a shuddering breath, Sarah slipped through a rusted side door, the wards she had spent days weaving parting like cobwebs before her. She moved down lightless, labyrinthine corridors, the guttering flare of her torch throwing monstrous shadows on the soot-blackened walls. The air was thick, cloying, reeking of rot and stagnant water and a coppery tang that made her gorge rise. But still Sarah pressed on, following the tug of something vast and unseen, a malign awareness that prickled across her skin like the brush of phantom fingers. Down and down she spiraled, deeper into the bowels of the factory, into a darkness that seemed to swallow the very light. At last she reached a cavernous chamber, its walls lined with rows upon rows of mirrors, each one shrouded in moldering black silk. In the center of the room, on a raised dais of pitted stone, stood the mirror. Davenport's masterwork, the fruits of his darkest labors. It towered over Sarah, twice the height of a man, its surface a perfect depthless black, the frame was wrought of twisting Byzantine ironwork, all jagged edges and leering gargoyle faces that seemed to writhe in the guttering torchlight. The whole thing pulsed with a presence, a living, seething malevolence that clawed at the edges of Sarah's mind, set her teeth on edge and her heart stuttering behind her ribs. This was the heart of it, the key to Davenport's great working, the anchor tethering his foul master to this world. And now, now it was Sarah's to destroy her chance to end this, once and for all. Slowly, each movement leaden with the weight of her purpose, Sarah reached into her satchel. She withdrew a small, velvet-wrapped bundle, her hands trembling only slightly as she peeled away the layers of fabric. And there, nestled in the folds, was Eleanor's silver athame, the blade that had struck the first blow against the entity, that had seared it with holy light, and the force of a love deeper than marrow, stronger than death. Sarah had consecrated it anew, washed it in sacred oils and the salt of her own tears, baptized it in the names of every lost soul crying out for vengeance. It shone in her hand like a fallen star, like a shard of purest dawn against the clinging shadows. All right, you bastard, Sarah whispered, her voice echoing strangely in the sepulchral hush. Let's finish this. She took a step towards the waiting mirror, the athame held before her like a talisman an oath given form and weight, and in that moment, the world shattered. Chapter 18 Showdown The air itself seemed to splinter, great jagged cracks spreading across the stones like grasping fingers. The chamber shook, ancient mortar crumbling, mirrors crashing to the ground in glittering explosions as reality rippled and buckled around Sarah. She staggered back with a cry, shielding her face against the sudden maelstrom of icy wind and shrieking shadows. In the heart of the chaos, the great mirror pulsed like a diseased sun, its surface roiling, bulging obscenely outward, 
as something vast and terrible strained to break through. No, Sarah screamed, denial and desperation surging up to choke her. She lunged forward, the silver athame blazing in her fist, holy words tearing their way out of her throat in a ragged litany. I won't let you through, do you hear me? Not this time, not ever again. But it was too late. With a sound like a thousand souls shrieking in agony, the mirror exploded outward, shards of glass hurtling through the air in a deadly glittering rain. Sarah cried out as they sliced into her skin, her arms, her chest, white hot lines of pain flaring to life across her body. And then, then the entity was there, rising from the shattered ruins of the glass like a tsunami of seething shadow, of writhing coalescing dark shot through with pulsing veins of sulfurous light. It towered over Sarah, a colossus of undulating darkness and glistening viscous flesh, a thousand nameless horrors given form and sentience. Eyes like pits of eldritch flame pierced her, stripped her to the bone and deeper, seeing all she was, all she had ever been. Foolish child, it hissed, the words shivering through Sarah's skull like shards of splintered glass. You dare to challenge me? To stand against the inexorable tide of my hunger, my will? The weight of its regard drove Sarah to her knees, blood sheeting down her face, her arms, each gasping breath and agony in her lungs. But still she clung to the athame, to the fierce, bright kernel of defiance pulsing at her core. I dare, she gritted out, forcing the words past the iron bands constricting her heaving chest. I dare, because Eleanor Carlyle dared, because she gave everything to drive you back, to deny you this world. Sarah pushed herself to her feet, legs trembling, blood dripping in her eyes, but her gaze was steel and fire. And I won't let her sacrifice be in vain. I won't let you win, you miserable, maggot-ridden bastard. Not while I still draw breath. The entity seemed to swell, shadows unfurling, edges sharpening into serrated claws, glistening fangs. You will fail, little mayfly, it snarled, the force of its malice slamming into Sarah like a physical blow. Just as she did. Just as all your wretched kind must before the glorious dark. It lunged, a tidal wave of undulating horror, of grasping limbs and gnashing mouths. Sarah screamed, instinct taking over as she thrust the silver athame out before her, a flare of searing light in the endless black. The blade pierced the entity's form, holy radiance erupting from the point of contact. The creature shrieked, a sound to shatter worlds, to rend sanity to tattered ribbons. It recoiled, a yawning void opening in its substance where the blessed silver had torn through. Sarah staggered back, gasping, her hands sizzling where she gripped the athame's hilt. But a fierce, terrible exultation was rising in her chest, a wild and reckless hope. It could be hurt. It could bleed. And if it bled, it could be killed. With a wordless cry of rage and grief and iron-clad purpose, Sarah charged, the athame burning like a falling star in her fist. She slashed and hacked and tore at the writhing dark, each blow searing her flesh, shattering her bones. But she didn't stop, didn't falter. Eleanor's face danced before her eyes, a banner, a beacon, the savage joy in her final smile, the peace in her storm-tossed gaze as she faced her end with nothing but love and fierce defiance in her heart. For her, Sarah thought, tears and blood streaking her vision, agony and exhaustion dragging at her heels. For her, and for every innocent soul this thing would destroy if it broke free. With a last shattering cry, Sarah plunged the silver athame into the entity's core, the blade sinking to the hilt in pustulant, pulsing flesh. Light exploded from the wound, searing, blinding, the creature's death scream echoing through Sarah's skull, like the tolling of an eldritch bell. And then, then there was silence, stillness, an empty, ringing nothingness, where the entity's presence had pressed down like a smothering weight. Slowly, painfully, Sarah crumpled to her knees, the athame tumbling from nerveless fingers. She stared at the shattered remnants of the mirror, the twisted, buckled frame, seeing her own face reflected back in a thousand glittering shards. Bruised, bloodied, triumphant. It was over. The long nightmare, the century of suffering and sorrow, of souls devoured and lives destroyed. It was finally blessedly over. Sarah bowed her head, a broken sob tearing its way out of her chest. For Eleanor, for the chance to see this through to fulfill the vow she had made over cold marble and consecrated earth. We did it, my love, she whispered, her lips cracked and bleeding, tears carving tracks through the filth caking her cheeks. We broke the mirror. 
we saved them all. And there, in the wreckage of her victory, in the echoing silence where once a great evil had roared its insatiable hunger, Sarah Bennett wept. For the woman she had lost, for the scars she would always bear, but most of all, for the shining, unassailable truth that even the darkest of nights must someday yield to dawn. The battle was over, the war was won, and somewhere, she knew, Eleanor was smiling. Chapter 19 The Aftermath The world didn't end. For Sarah, stumbling out of the factory's crumbling ruins into pale, watery sunlight, this fact came as something of a shock. After so long in the dark, both literal and metaphorical, the quiet normalcy of the London streets felt jarringly surreal, mundane. But the city's bustle and hum continued unabated, blessedly oblivious to how close utter annihilation had brushed against the edges of its ordered existence. Unaware of the sacrifice and blood and shattering loss that had pushed that dark tide back, that had bought one more precious day of light. Sarah moved through the wan sunbeams and milling crowds in a haze, her battered body operating on momentum and willpower alone. The aches were already setting in, broken bones and flayed flesh knitting together with agonizing slowness. But even that felt distant, unimportant against the vastness of what she had done. What they had done, her and Eleanor, mirror breakers, light against the suffocating dark. Sarah's eyes burned, exhaustion and grief and the bitter dregs of adrenaline blurring her vision. But she didn't let the tears fall. Not yet. Not until she had finished one final task one last labor of love in this strange, numb aftermath. Her feet carried her through the streets, as if of their own volition, her mind a churning blank. At last, she found herself standing at a familiar wrought iron gate, the same dense fog curling around her ankles, her shoulders. Highgate, the quiet corner she had chosen for Eleanor's memorial, the bronze plaque nestled between gnarled roots. Sarah knelt before it, the damp earth cool against her scraped knees, her scorched palms, with reverent fingers she drew out the silver athame, the blade now blackened, pitted with the entity's corrosive essence. It still thrummed faintly against her skin, divine wrath and holy purpose woven into the very metal, a weapon of last resort, of direst need. But its time was done now, the great work finished, the long fight over at last. Sarah would not see it fall into the wrong hands, would not risk its power turned to darker ends. Slowly, solemnly, she used the athame's point to dig a shallow trench in the loam before Eleanor's plaque. She laid the blade to rest in that earthy cradle, her fingers lingering on the hilt, the delicate cross guard. Sleep now, Sarah whispered, her voice hoarse, cracked. Sleep and be still, your duty ended. Thank you. Thank you for your service, your strength, for being the sword in my hand when I needed it most, the light to guide me home. With shaking fingers, Sarah smoothed the disturbed earth back into place patting it gently down. She rocked back on her heels and simply breathed for a moment, letting the gray tranquility of the cemetery settle around her, a shroud, a comfort. It was done. The mirror shattered, its spawned horrors banished to the abyss, and the tools of that great working put to rest. Balance restored, the scales set right, and Eleanor... Eleanor could rest now too, could find the peace that had been so long and so cruelly denied her. Sarah drew in a shuddering breath, the knot in her chest easing, unfurling into something bittersweet and aching. Somewhere, somewhen, she knew Eleanor Carlyle was smiling, was looking down on this moment with fierce, shining pride in her storm-gray eyes, love and absolution in the curve of her phantom lips. Slowly, Sarah reached out to trace the lines of the bronze plaque, the words she had etched there what felt like a lifetime ago. We did it, my love, she whispered, salt stinging the corners of her eyes grief and joy and soul-deep weariness tangling in her throat. We broke the mirror. We saved the world. A smile tugged at Sarah's cracked lips, small and wavering but real, the first she had felt in longer than she could remember. You can rest easy now, Eleanor Carlyle. Your fight is over. Your war is won. She pressed her brow to the cool metal, her tears finally falling free, sliding like benediction down her cheeks. Thank you for everything, for showing me how to be brave, how to stand against the dark. Sarah swallowed hard, the words thick, heavy with finality on her tongue. I'll take it from here, my friend, my sister. You've earned your peace a thousand times over. She closed her eyes, letting the weight of this moment, 
of all that had come before wash through her, the pain, the fear, the shattering, incomprehensible loss. But most of all, the love, the purpose, the shining rightness of the path she had walked, the battle she had fought at Eleanor's side. And in the end, that was what Sarah held to, the light that had flared so bright, so fierce, even in the deepest dark, the love that had broken mirrors and freed two souls in the process. Slowly, Sarah stood, her head high, her shoulders squared. She cast one last lingering look at the plaque, at the tiny corner of damp earth that held a piece of her heart, now and always. Then she turned and walked away, back towards the world she had bled and wept and broken to save. There would be other evils to face, she knew, other battles to fight. That was the nature of the work, the burden and the calling of a mirror breaker, a shield against all the hungry shadows that prowled beyond the firelight. But Sarah Bennett would be ready for them, would meet them with head high and silver in hand, with Eleanor's courage burning in her breast. The long night was over, the dawn had come, and Sarah, Sarah would greet it with open arms and a warrior's defiant smile. Chapter 20 The Resolution The bell above the shop door chimed, a sweet silvery sound in the dusty hush. Sarah looked up from the ledger she was poring over, blinking against the sudden wash of pale autumn sunlight as a customer stepped inside. Welcome to Bennett's Antiques, she called out, rising from her stool with a smile. Anything particular I can help you find today? The customer, an older woman with a kind, creased face, returned the smile as she began browsing the crowded shelves. Oh, just looking for now, dear. You have such a lovely collection. It's always such a pleasure to poke around in here. Something warmed in Sarah's chest at the words, a quiet flare of pride. In the months since Highgate, since the final shattering of Davenport's vile legacy, she had thrown herself into the shop with a will, had sorted and catalogued and restored, breathing new life into the neglected space, the forgotten treasures languishing in its shadowed corners. Bit by bit, piece by piece, she had rebuilt, had taken the shards of her old life the tattered remnants of all she had been before the mirror and the shadows, and forged them into something new, something strong and bright and fiercely, defiantly alive. It hadn't been easy. The scars the entity had left her with, both physical and otherwise, ran deep, ached like old wounds in the dark of night. There were still moments when Sarah caught the edge of her reflection in some polished surface and flinched, memory and instinct colliding in a gibbering rush of fear. But she was learning, learning to breathe through the aftershocks, to ground herself in the present with all its small beauties and quiet joys, learning to live in a world where the shadows held no deeper terrors than those of the heart and mind. And she wasn't alone. Michael came by the shop often, his steadfast presence a balm, a reminder of all the goodness that still existed beyond the firelight's edge. Dr. Klein, too, had become a regular visitor, her keen insights and wry humor a surprising solace in the dark moments but it was the work that sustained Sarah most. The act of restoration, of taking things lost and forgotten and imbuing them with renewed value, renewed purpose. It felt right, in a bone-deep way she didn't quite have the words for, as if every polished sconce and rehung painting was a tiny act of defiance, a reclamation of light from all the hungry dark. As if in some small but vital way, she was still breaking mirrors, still dismantling the residue of old evils, old hungers, with every careful, loving stroke of her craft. Eleanor would have been proud, Sarah thought with a sudden pang, a bittersweet ache beneath her breast. Would have appreciated the symbolism of it, the quiet war Sarah waged every day across the checkerboard of her shop floor. Some battles were not won in blood and fear and desperate screaming magic. Some were won slowly, softly, a hundred tiny choices woven together into something vast and adamant and unbreakably bright. The customer's voice broke into Sarah's thoughts, shaking her out of wool-gathering reflection. Oh, now this is exquisite. Such delicate craftsmanship. Sarah glanced over to see the woman carefully extracting a hand mirror from a pile of tarnished argent. It was a lovely thing. All twining roses and playful cherubs worked in sterling silver. For a moment, memory shuddered through Sarah like a lightning strike. Sightless eyes and grasping shadows, a great roaring hunger that ripped at the edges of the world. But she pushed it aside, jaw clenching with stubborn will. That power was broken, 
That dark door sealed and barred. And this mirror, this mirror was just a mirror, beautiful and precious in its own right, untainted by any blacker purpose. Sarah crossed the shop floor, gently taking the looking glass from the woman's hands. She polished it with a soft cloth until it shone, her reflection smiling back at her from the gleaming depths. Just a woman, battered and scarred and still standing, against all odds and cents, a mirror breaker, now and always. It's Edwardian, if I'm not mistaken, Sarah said, handing the mirror back with a smile. 1910 or thereabouts. See the hallmark there on the handle's rim? A truly lovely example of the era's craftsmanship. The customer beamed, cradling the mirror like the treasure it was. Oh, it's perfect. I must have it. How much? As Sarah rang up the sale, carefully wrapping the mirror in tissue and brown paper, she felt a sudden lightness in her chest. A certainty, bright and clean as the sun through the shop windows. This was where she was meant to be. This was the shape of her life now, after so much struggle, so much pain and loss and world-shaking dark, guardianship and renewal, keeping the shadows at bay one small, precious piece at a time. It was enough. It was everything. As the bell chimed the customer's departure, Sarah looked around her little kingdom of polished wood and gleaming brass, of history reclaimed and purpose restored. Well, Eleanor, she murmured, a smile tugging at her lips, her eyes burning with the sweet ache of memory. We saved the world after all. Now I've just got to figure out how to live in it. And there, in the warm and cluttered space of Bennett's antiques, Sarah squared her shoulders to the task, to living and healing and walking forward into the light. One step, one day, one tiny act of defiance at a time. Epilogue The dream came often, in the deep reaches of the night. Sarah stood at the edge of a great, windswept moor, the sky above roiling with storm clouds shot through with searing violet light. The air crackled against her skin, the scent of heather and petrichor thick in her lungs. And there, striding towards her across the heather, a figure clad all in shining silver. A warrior, proud and tall, dark curls whipping about a face Sarah would know in any lifetime, in any world. Eleanor. She was smiling as she reached Sarah, her own eyes bright with unshed tears, not of grief or pain, but of joy, of shining, unassailable connection. Her calloused fingers reached out, tracing the line of Sarah's cheek, smooth and whole in this place that was not a place. This moment spun out of memory and longing, the aching need to see her friend, her sister, one last time. You did it, Eleanor said, her voice ringing with quiet triumph. You beautiful, brilliant thing. You broke the mirror, and the world is brighter for it. Sarah leaned into the touch, a small, hiccuping sob working its way out of her chest. We did it, she corrected, covering Eleanor's hand with her own. I'd never have made it through without you, without your courage, your sacrifice. Eleanor smiled, a softer thing, sweet with understanding. But you did make it through, and look at you now, strong and whole and burning brighter than any shadow could ever touch. She leaned in, resting her brow against Sarah's, an exhale shivering between them. I'm so proud of you, Sarah Bennett, so proud and so humbled to have fought at your side. Sarah swallowed hard past the lump in her throat, the sweet ache in her chest. I miss you, she whispered, the words raw and honest in the charged air between them. Every day I miss you, miss your fire, your courage, the way you made me feel like I could take on the world as long as you were with me. Eleanor's fingers tightened on hers, a gentle squeeze of perfect understanding. I know, she breathed, her own voice thick with echoed grief, echoed longing. But I'm never truly gone, Sarah, not as long as you carry a piece of me in your warrior's heart. She drew back slightly, storm gray eyes fierce and shining in the wild light. And you do, my love, in every battle you fight, every shadow you push back with the brightness of your spirit, I am there, watching, guiding, believing with everything I am. Eleanor's smile grew, blinding in its brilliance, its unshakable faith. You are a mirror breaker, Sarah Bennett, a light in the darkness, a guardian at the gate, and that is a power, a purpose that no one and nothing can ever take from you. Sarah nodded, blinking back the sting of tears, the swell of emotion clogging her throat. I'll keep fighting, she vowed the words ringing with solemn promise, with ironclad resolve. For you, for us, for everything we believed in. 
I won't let the darkness win, Eleanor. Not ever again. I know you won't, Eleanor said softly, pride and love and unshakable certainty thrumming in every syllable. You are so much stronger than you know, Sarah, so much braver than the shadows could ever dream. She leaned in, brushing a feather-light kiss across Sarah's brow, a benediction, a claiming. And when your fighting days are through, when you've lit up every last corner of this world, I'll be waiting for you, in a place where no mirror can ever hold us, no darkness ever dim our light. A shuddering sigh worked its way out of Sarah's chest, something slotting into place, deep in the marrow of her. A rightness, a belonging, as vast and unchangeable as the turning of the stars. I'll find you, she whispered, leaning into the warm solidity of Eleanor, of this moment that was and was not. I promise. I know you will, Eleanor murmured, her smile soft and secret against Sarah's skin. But until then, live, my love. Live and fight and blaze brighter than the sun. For me, for us, and for all the precious light we bought with our blood and our tears. She stepped back, fingers lingering on Sarah's cheek, the wild winds of the moor whipping at her skirts, her hair. And know that I am always with you, now and forever, to whatever end. And between one blink and the next, she was gone, fading into the heather and the mist like a sigh, a promise. But the warmth of her touch lingered, searing and bright, an invisible shield against all the world's cruelties. Sarah woke with that warmth still pulsing beneath her breast, tears tracking slow and cleansing down her temples, her pillow. But her heart was light, shored up with purpose and resolve. She would live. She would fight. And when the time came, when her battles were done and her light had blazed across every shadowed corner, she would find her way back to Eleanor, back to that shining place where no mirror could ever part them, no darkness ever touch their hard-won joy. But until then, until then, she would be what she was, what she had always been, from the moment she first set hand to uncursed glass, a mirror breaker, a light against the shadows, a guardian at the gate. Sarah Bennett rose to face the dawn, a smile curving her lips, her scars shining like badges of valor in the growing light. And somewhere, somewhen, she knew Eleanor Carlyle was smiling back. The End